Brett, you started your career as a music teacher in elementary school. What was yes. it like teaching in the Atlanta school system then? Well, when I started, it was a very, very enjoyable experience, okay? There wasn't a lot of bureaucracy to deal with. Okay? You got a chance to actually work with children and do things with them okay? without having to worry about uh, the testing that was going to, you know, come up. At. But it was a very enjoyable experience. How many years did you teach? I taught for uh, 33 years. And now you're a supposedly in retirement? <laughs> supposedly, yes I am. <laughs> what are you doing in retirement? Well, in retirement I have started a career as an actress. I, I do stage, stage work. Um, I perform semi-regularly with the Atlanta Theatre to go. Uh, I perform with um, the Horizon Theatre in town. I perform with um, Synchronicity Theatre, Theatrical Outfit. I did an opera with the Atlanta Opera Company, uh, and I've also done some film work. Yeah. I know you've worked with Tyler Perry. What is it like working with Tyler Perry? That was a really awesome experience uh, that, uh, that I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, they really treat you like you are a star, <laughs> which, you know, was very overwhelming to me coming from a background of, of teaching you know where you are in the in drudgery all the time but there i mean everybody's catering to you what can i get for you are you okay this that and the other but it was very very nice and he is very very professional um in his directing you've had a few challenging roles in your life mm -hmm. right now you're caring for your 97 year old mother so what is it like and for a 97-year-old <laughs> um, that This is, I think, the most challenging thing that I have done because, as you said, she is my parent and she is still my parent, even though she's more, sometimes more like my child than in, in the way she acts and behaves and is able to do, but she is still my parent. So um, even though I'm trying to do things to make her comfortable, you know, and do things that are for her benefit, if it's not something that she is willing to do, she lets me know that she is still the parent. <laughs> I think one time you described it to me as a two-year-old two person and a 97-year-old body. Yes, yes. If, if you remember your two-year-old, they're the ones who always can do it themselves. You know, whether, whether they can actually perform the task or not. Okay, so um, sometimes Mama is, is at that stage where she is, insists that she can do it. Okay, but she's more getting more in your way than actually getting things done. <laughs> Tell us more about it. Mama, where you were born? Okay, I was born in Waycross, Georgia. That's uh, South Georgia. It's um, 77 miles north of Jacksonville, Florida, which makes it actually closer to, to the Florida border than it is to Atlanta. Um, I grew up in the town that I grew up in. It was a very small town. I'm one of four children. Um, my mother is one of 12 children. And growing up, all her sisters and brothers, except for three, actually lived in Waycross. So I had lots and lots of cousins around uh, all the time. Um, I grew up in a house with, like, as, as I said, four children. Okay, they were the, I had two sisters, one brother. So, uh, we had my mama and my dad. We had a house that had one bathroom. So I learned quickly how to share things <laughs> growing up. <laughs> uh, whether you wanted to or not, you had to share. <laughs> Oftentimes I got a chance to, uh, but, but even that, there were things that were mine that I didn't have to share if I didn't want to, so. And you in turn have a daughter. What is your daughter like? <sighs> now my, I have one daughter. Okay, un unfortunately I was divorced in, uh, when she was very young, so. She grew up as an only child, 
and sharing is something that I tried to teach her but growing up as an only child she didn't learn that very well so <laughs> you've had a number of challenges in your life you were a divorced single mother raising a child alone uh, you had some financial stresses mm -hmm. what uh, what qualities do you have that allowed you to meet those challenges well I, I think I am, I have grown into a very strong person. Um, I grew up with two very strong-willed parents and I think that that sort of, how do you say, milled it down to me. And uh, over, over time I have developed that, that strong will. Um, Having, having a, a genuine love for people, I think, um, has helped me with that. Um, and a determination to <laughs> succeed. How did you make the transition to acting? Acting is something that I have pretty much always been involved with. Okay, growing up, and, um, and when I was in elementary school, I was in every operetta they ever produced at my school. I was a part of the drama team when I was in high school. I did a couple of plays when, when I was in college. Um, when I started teaching, I used to do plays with, with my students at school. I did a few operettas. I did, and, um, okay, I, I did, I was the general music teacher. So I, I also had a chorus, okay. So it generally in the springtime, I would always do a musical play with, with my chorus to finish our year out. Um, at my church, after some time, we, we started this play called MJ the Modern Job. And I was cast as Mrs. Job. <laughs> the, uh, Job was, uh, it, it was done, told in modern day times, Job, the story of Job from the Bible, but he was told in modern day times. Job was a businessman on Peachtree, and I was his socialite wife, okay? Um, and every year after we finished that play, there was this um, girl at my church who would always tell me that I was just wasting my time at Atlanta Public Schools. I need to be in Hollywood. So after I retired from teaching, I decided I'd try and see if anybody was interested in my acting other than my church members. So I started taking classes uh, at the Lions Theater, I started. Um, I did some workshops here and there at other little studios around town, um, and I started auditioning. Music has played a large part in your life. What does music mean to you? Music is everything to me. I've, I've always been involved in music. Um, as, as a young child, my, my mother insisted that we all have piano lessons, and out of the four siblings, I was the only one who really stuck to it. Okay, I was a music major in college as I taught music in um, elementary school. That was my career. But music has always been a big part of, big part of my life. It, it, it keeps me sane, <laughs> I, I really think. You're a woman of color. Mm -hmm. And among all the challenges you've mentioned in your life, you haven't mentioned color. Was color a challenge in your life? I've, I have never uh, let that be a challenge. I, I grew up in segregated South, okay, where there, there was no issue of color because everybody was black like me. All right, when I went to college, I went to college in an, in an all black school. Um, there was never an issue of color. Um, I started, when I started teaching, I taught in an all-black school, there was never an issue of color. Um, I don't. I don't think I ever. The okay. The first. The first white teacher I ever had. I had, was when I was in college, and he was just a person. He was another man, and he he taught me piano. I, when, when I finally started working, actually working with uh, people of other races, it, they just seemed like other people. I was, I was always, I was taught from, from young person. My mama would always say, 
that she grew up with um, with uh, they lived, she grew up on a farm there were white farmers who lived next to them there were colored farmers who lived next to them they never had problem and she always taught us that people were people you know there was they, they're just people they're good white folk they're bad white folk they're good colored folk they're bad colored folk people are people and and I just always believe that what advice would you give to the next generation coming along Be the best that you can be. Get as much education as you can. Treat people the way you would want them to treat you. Um, and always do the best that you can. And how would you like to be remembered? I would like to be remembered as someone who tried to do my best. Someone who appreciated everyone for who they were, what they could do, and hope everyone does the same for me.